Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farmer's Dynasty. And I did say that we were going to be repairing some of the farm today, but we've also got our fields of grain that we need to harvest quite desperately as well. So I'm genuinely torn. I'm still genuinely torn between which ones we should do. So what I'm thinking is if we shut this door here, we'll repair this grain store here. And we've already got the silo repaired, and we've got the tractor with the trailer, and we've got our combine here. So we'll do that, and then we'll get the combining done, and then I think there is a baler actually somewhere on the map that we can go and get from someone. Uh, I'm not sure who it is though, what's this? Um, oh, that's the corn header there. And right, so over here we've got two manure spreader, we've got a hay wagon. Um... An old fertilizer. I'm guessing that's a fertilizer spreader and hay wagon. I'm not sure about the hay wagon. I would guess that might actually be the baler rather than a hay wagon. Um, oh, and there's been some updates done. There has been a few updates and there is a change been instigated. Something has been added. I need to find it. Where is it? I need to find it so that I can show you. Yes, there has been some animals have been added to the map. Um, I don't know how many animals, a few animals have been added to the map. Uh, we've got deer, we've got some wild boar apparently, and then there are uh, storks or herons or something around the lake. I don't see any at the moment. And apparently we can light the campfires as well. There is a campfire over here. So let us see what we can do. Can we, can we yes, we can light it. So you can now light the campfire. If it gets wet, you've got birds in the distance as well. If it gets wet, it will go out, and after a while it goes out anyway. So you can just extinguish it yourself if you want to. So yes, you can light the campfires. There are deer running around and wild boar. I don't think you can actually do anything to them. I don't imagine that they would add in the hunting of the deer or the wild boar or anything like that. It would be pretty cool if they did, but I just can't see it happening personally. Um... Not in a, a not in a farm sim type game. Um, anyway, there is I, I can't see it here. I'm I'm looking around. I don't see it. I thought that it would be here because it did say in the update text uh, that it was there. Hmm. Let's have a look. We go. I'm right there. That's. Can I zoom in a bit? Right there. The old old pickup there. Click to enter. So where is it? Oh, it's out here. Ah, oh, right. It's on the road in front of the farm. But yes, we have now been given a pickup. So we've got something that we can actually travel around with just a little bit faster, which I think is absolutely awesome. I am thoroughly delighted with this. I think this is absolutely brilliant. So we're not going to be doing very much. Oh, there was one of the herons. That one flew away. I've just seen it off to the side. Um, we'll just have a little drive down to the river and then we'll turn around and come back again. We're not going to... I know I said that I was thinking that we should work on the house, but I really think we need to get that grain harvested. So that is my... that's got to be my priority. We need we, we need to do that. We're all right. You know, we, we don't have a wife or kids to have to worry about. So we don't have to sort of concern ourselves with um, like making sure there's a proper roof over their heads or anything. We're doing just fine as we are with the dodgy roof. So what we're going to do is we're going to harvest first and then we'll go back and we will do the repair work. I do, I will repair that one grain store. We've got that one grain storage area. There's someone running along the road there. Are they after me? I don't think they are. We'll, we'll, we'll leave them go. We've got work that we need to do. And let's go to change camera. <laughs> um, I think this one's been in a fire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the texture on the inside of this is just fantastic. Everything's melted. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. This has got to be the best texture I have ever seen inside a vehicle. Look at it. <laughs> Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. I love it. I don't know why. I mean, you look outside, it looks quite normal. But yeah, I, I don't know why. I just, I genuinely love it. Am I really jumping in through there? That is just brilliant. Look at that. It's been, it's, it's been set on fire. That's what's happened. That pickup has been set on fire at some point or another. Right, anyway. 
We'll repair that grain store up there. So we can go in here, we will run upstairs, and we'll repair that. I don't think there's anything on the floor that we've got to do. No, we don't get upstairs that way. We've got to come through here, and next one again. Here we go, we go upstairs here. Uh, there's a wall there that needs to be repaired. I think that we will repair all of the walls around this little section here, and the roof as well. So I'm, I'll do the roof from on the top. I'm going to go through to that one there, and I'm going to repair this wall. So we put the frame up. There we go. We've got a window back and everything. That's looking great. And we'll go and we'll do this side as well. There we go. Repair the old air bricks. Install the window. It's quite simple doing this. You haven't really got anything to worry about with like ledges and that. You just put a steel framed window in and then bricks up around the outside. It's not like you're doing a, um, a window for inside a house. Um, you got to take a little bit more care over the job when you're doing a window inside a house than you do in a barn. It's actually really, really simple to install the one in the barn. Uh, right, is there a... I got, I'll replace old air bricks over there. Is there an actual doorway to install on here? I don't think there's any door at all. Doesn't look like it, but we've repaired the room there. So what we're going to do now is we'll come round and we'll run outside. And then I'm going to go out through this door right here. And I'll shut that one. And then I'm going to put up a little bit of scaffolding so that we can get up onto that roof up there. Now, where can I put some more scaffold? I can put some there. I need to get up onto the roof. i got no way of putting scaffold up. I can put that bit on. Is it really not going to let me join the two together? I guess I can get up and... No, that's not going to let me jump up onto the roof. Might have to bring it round this side. No, it's not going to let me do that. Please, I just want to be able to get from... Is it really not going to let us do that? That doesn't make any sense. Why won't you let us do that? We come to here. And I can remove that piece of scaffolding. And then I can place this one here. It won't let me put any up on the roof. How am I supposed to get onto the roof? We'll have to come over this side. And again, it's still not going up onto the roof. It's not going high enough. I've, oh, I know, I know, I know. Maybe I've actually got to go up here to do the next level. Nope, that's just saying remove scaffold. I thought maybe that we'd have to sort of go up and then um, do the next level from up here. I can do that bit. Ah, that's going up to a higher level. We can come out here and I go up to this level up here and then... Right, I can remove that scaffold. And I can build, but it won't, it won't actually let me put any more scaffold up to go right up to the very top of the roof. Which is a little bit of a shame, never mind. We'll replace the old planks on there and on this one as well. Over here. Oop, another piece on there. And that one. Job done. I'm going to do the whole roof. While we're up here, we will just do this whole roof. And we'll worry about doing the inside of this barn later on when we've got a bit more time. And that's that one done. And we'll do that bit there. There we go. One on there, and then the end piece down here, which will do, just kind of wrap it all up quite nicely. Finish that one. That one's fine. That one there. We, there's a lot of damage on this roof. Oop, there we go. And another one. And two more, by the look of it. We've got that one there, and then this one over here on the end. Right. That's done. So we've repaired the roof up here. Let me just jump down here and we'll look around with the engineer's site. This piece of roof down here looks absolutely fine. I've also got everything is done up here as well so that we need to do. Uh, that is the whole house over there is looking pretty grim, to be honest. The, the whole house. It, there isn't, there's nothing good there. This also I'm not entirely comfortable about. Um, the scaffolding being that close to the, to the main power. Um, yeah, that's, that's making me decidedly uncomfortable having so much metal right up against that. So I think what we'll do is we'll go to this one and we'll remove that frame just so that it doesn't all become live. Because, you know, these things do happen and I don't really want them to. So if I remove that, I can remove that piece and then I can back up and I can remove that piece. And then we can whiz down through here and take that piece off as well. Right. Oh, no, we've got one more. There we go. Okay, so there's the scaffolding done. We've now repaired that barn, and we can put the grain up there. We haven't repaired the rest of it. We're not going to worry about that for a minute. We're going to go and find our combine. There's another stalk. Crane, whichever one it is. Uh, right, so we've got our combine here. We'll do the canola first, and then we will do the um, 
do the wheat afterwards. We're going to put the canola over in that barn over there. I'm not really sure how it works, whether or not you can just tip from the trailer straight into the, the, the chute over there. We'll have to see. Right, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to do this. Um, I, I've got, oh, why has it unhitched itself? I didn't leave it unhitched. So we'll put it to here. We, we've got to go forward a little bit more, actually, to be able to hitch on. So we hitch on the grain header. There we go. So we've got header on and off. Um, we've got uh, and header up and down. So if I do header on like that, header down, and is there... Can we move? Right, I'm using the mouse, and that's not doing anything. It doesn't... Look, if I use the... Oh, I see! Right, If you when you're on the vehicle, if you press the right mouse button... That shows you the percentage of fuel that it's got. Right, so right mouse button shows you everything. Wherever you go, right mouse button shows you things. And also, small trees and shrubs. We now have a chainsaw that we can get. I don't know how to use a chainsaw yet. Um, move the discharge pipe. Unhitch the grain header. It doesn't look like we can actually change the height of the reel on the combine, which is a bit of a shame. So, um, what's just happened there? I'm not sure what it just did. It just did something. It, it did something, and I'm not sure what I did. Uh, no, I, it wasn't that. I pressed T, or was it R? No, I pressed T. And then it, it did something strange. I might have just been because I was going into the field or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, but it, it definitely did something a little bit strange then. Um, I'll keep a close eye on it. When we move into the next crop, I'll keep an eye on it. Right, apparently we're getting a little hungry. Uh, let me come up through there. And you are moving too fast. You're losing some crop. Right. Yeah, it's because I was using the um, the forward, just the, the WASD keys instead of what I should have done. To um, What I should be doing is press T. If you press T, it goes forward by itself rather than... Uh, it goes forward at the appropriate speed for the machine. Um when it's being used. So it, I did the same when I was doing the plowing, the cultivating and stuff like that. So we don't want to be going too fast on this one. If I press right mouse now while I'm doing it, right, so there we go. We've got 68% of canola on board. And I'll just come out on round the corner there. I'm just going to go right round the edge a few times and then we'll start sort of working up and down the field. 87%. Uh, Does it actually tell us when the combine is full? There's no way of... We didn't have like a... Um, a grain tank to unfold on this one, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we are on... I see! When you, when you mouse over the field, when you right-click over the field, it says... So we've got canola 89.6, harvested 10.35. We're on 93%. Of, we've already got a ton of canola on board. Uh, you are overfilling... Is that really already? We're full. No, 96%. We've just, we just got to go forward a little bit. 97... I want to go all the way to full. That's what I want to do. 100%. Right, now we're completely full. We can't do any more than that, just for a minute. So I will turn the header off a second, just like that, and move discharge pipe. Press F. That one will roll it out like that. Right, so now I need to go and get my tractor. And from what I can tell, the best way to do that is just to go and get it, just like this. So we, we just click on it like that, and then it, it jumps to it. So that one should... I'm hoping. Yes, it's unhitch. It says unhitch as the option. So we should just be able to drive straight over to the combine. The yield for canola is particularly good. We've got a full combine tank full, um, not even once around this field. Although I am a little bit curious now how much we're going to get from the other field with the wheat. Because technically the wheat yield should be far higher than the canola yield. So yeah, we could end up having to spend an awful lot of time emptying out our combine. So if I bring that one up there, right beside it, and stop. Right, the trailer slides around. I really don't like the way that the trailer slides. Uh, there's not a lot that I can do about that. We come over this side and we'll jump up onto here. Right, is there anything? So, uh, oh, I see. Stop, start, spilling grain. So I can go like that. Now, we are getting a little bit of movement on some of the stuff, but generally it seems to be okay. And... Uh, I'm looking here, so we've got nothing left in it at the moment, and I can start it up again. So if I press Z for the header on, I don't. I don't think I was moving. You're moving too fast. Whoops! I don't want to be doing that. I want to press T. I don't think that I was moving 
very much. I think that the movement of the crop sort of gives the illusion that the combine is moving around a bit. Um, that is actually very, very cool. I do like that it does that. This is an awesome little effect that it's got. Um, but at the same time, it can be kind of off-putting. It kind of makes you think that you are sliding around an awful lot. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's not brilliant. We're already half full. We've only just come down across the field, and we're half full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn here, and I'm going to go back up this way. Swing around tight like that. I'm just going to go back up this way until the combine is full, and then I'll go straight over to that trailer, and I'll empty out. I think it's going to be quicker if we do it like this rather than any other way. We're on 75% full already. And 80. Yeah, 87. So I'm just going to watch it like this now. I'm just going to see that number creep up. 95. And that's got to be it about there. 99%. That's close enough for me. That is good enough for me. So uh, Z to stop that one. R to lift the header up like that. And then I can move on over. And it says I can start spilling the grain. I don't want to tip it on the floor, though. I want to bring it right over the trailer like that. And then I want to do it. I am curious. Does it... Oh, there we go. You can act... you can even see on the trailer how much is in there. So that's 2,400 kilos. And it's not yet full. So we back up like this. And then we head forward again. And I want to go lower that one down and start the header up again. And then press T. I don't want to be doing this manually. I don't want to manually sort of push the button for going up and down the field. And we'll take another slice. So going up here and then back. We're probably going to finish this time somewhere down the bottom end of the field. Uh, we've already got nearly 20% of um, grain in our combine. Come down. Oop, moving too fast. Yeah, don't move too fast. I am glad that it warns us that we're moving too fast. That is actually quite good. I like this. I do like the fact that we're combining. This does look a bit like an old New Holland combine. I don't know if it actually is a New Holland combine, but it certainly looks that way. Um, right, um, where's my information? Oh, it's there. It's 50%. We're on 50% at the moment. I'm just going to... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go sort of straight out like this, and then I'm going to swing around so that I'm actually reducing the amount that I um, I need. I can speed up a little bit. Uh, yeah, reduce the amount that I need. That doesn't say, that doesn't make it It made sense in my head before I said it. <laughs> it really did. Um, reduce the amount of um, grain that I'm taking on board right now so that I can go a little bit faster. Uh, I want to do that one there. I can go a little bit further. I can get back up the other end of the field before I've got to actually empty out, but I don't know how well that's going to work. Um, we're on 75% there, and 80, it does, it fills up very, very quickly, doesn't it? I mean, I am taking an absolutely, completely full swath now, 98, 99, and there is the 100, just a little bit more, there, 1200 kilos. And we go back like that. You're moving too fast. Yeah, I don't think I am actually moving too fast. I think you're just being a bit dramatic. And we'll move over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this one there like that. And we are going to unload that grain. Crops are spilling onto the ground. How much crop have we lost? 3,075. So we did lose some on the ground. I think that's actually now been lost to go for good. I think, it's, I think that is now gone. That crop that we just lost on the ground. So you've got to be very careful about that as well. So there's a nice lot of details that this game has that are uh, added in. And um, it, it's sort of, it's, it's a nice realistic approach. You've got to make sure the spout is properly over the trailer. It's very easy to dump it all onto the ground. Um, the same control is used to dump onto the ground as is used to dump into the trailer. So it's actually very easy to miss the trailer. Farming Simulator... Whilst I, I, I love that game, okay? I do love the game, but we are obviously going to be having comparisons between the two now. We're playing two different games here. Um, the one thing with Farming Simulator is you've got to press a different button to enable it to tip onto the ground. So you don't actually have to be particularly accurate. You can just go near a trailer, and if it's got it kind of nearby, it'll dump it into the trailer. This one, you're chucking stuff on the ground admittedly with this one we're losing the stuff that goes on the ground rather than keeping it and that is a bit that's something that's letting this game down at the moment however i do feel that that will probably change in the future 
Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to go here and I'm going to go along the bottom end of this field and just take one more little slice, like that. And that'll probably fill up this tank almost completely to the top. 89%. Um, if I do another little piece like that, we've got a little bit more room for turning on this end of the field. And we should also have a little bit more grain in the tank. There we go. Oop, oop, 99%. That's probably close. Oh, hang on. How much have I got? Four kilos. Is that going to be enough to get this little bit here? 1199. Right. Well, we'll stop there a second. Just going to stop right there like that. And we'll bring the tractor back over in a second. Uh, we'll turn that one off. Raise the header up. And then if I just use the map a minute and we'll swap over like this. Go on to that one. Yeah, that trailer is moving around a lot. That is something that I don't like. Definitely don't like that. I don't like the sliding. That'll be something that I guess that they would work on later on. Um, and we look on here. See, we've got 95% fuel. 73% in our trailer. I don't know if we can get another 1,200 litres into this trailer or not. But we will find out in just a second. Um, actually, no, you've got to... You've got to get out of the track. This is one thing I don't like, is it won't auto-unload when you pull underneath the combine. So you don't sort of have any hired help that's helping you out at all. And I'm jumping out of the trailer here, uh, the tractor here. And that trailer definitely slides downhill an awful long way, which is, again, not something I'm very fond of. It didn't slide downhill there, though. Trailer is full. Empty it into the silo. And what have we got in, in the combine? We don't have anything in the combine at the moment. So I can, I'll back that one up there like that and stop. And then if I jump out, now I come over to the tractor. And again, that trailer is sliding all over the place. So that it's the trailer that's doing it here and it's not the, not the tractor. We haven't noticed the tractor doing any sliding. I don't want to tip it here. Raise the trailer. Right, so where's the tip point for this bin over here this is the bit that i'm a little bit concerned about is i want to be able to use this I, it says that i can raise the trailer but how do i raise it so that it goes into there i want to get it in there um right i'm looking around you can use it as an alternative it's your choice just don't try to mix grains grain storage we've got canola 4200 kilos 100 i don't know if we've lost anything in there that one says it's empty. Place trailer here to retrieve grains from your storage. That's the disposal. So where's that bit? Oh, we've um, exited into the shed here. Uh, we've got the dis the right. It's disposal. It said place the grains here, the trailer here to right. So the trailer goes underneath that chute right there in order to empty out. That's fine. Um, we come round this side. And then the trailer there, that one, grain storage is, you can store the grains here. Only once it's your choice, just don't try to mix grains. So how do you get the grain in there? If I just tip, it's going to go on the ground, isn't it? Judging by that trailer, I'd say it's going to go straight on the ground. Let me have a look here. Pour grains here to store them. Silo can contain only one sort of grain. If you pour another, you will lose these. Silo shoot. Silo disposal. And then you go over here. This one just says grain storage. You can store the grains. Don't try to mix. Right, so we know that we mustn't try to mix. I suspect that to tip this trailer, it actually tips it on the back rather than on the side. So we're going to have to try reversing that trailer into position. That is going to be extremely difficult with this trailer. This trailer is not very good, especially as it slides around. Um, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> I have got no hope whatsoever of being able to do it if it's going to slide around like that. I got absolutely no chance. It's n yeah, there's, there's no way that that is going to happen. Okay, so we're going to have to go round, and backing this trailer up is not an option. We are we're simply just not going to be able to do that. So instead of trying to back this trailer up, we will bring it round and we'll do this again. I'm going to I'm going to put it up beside. The point there and we'll do raise the trailer we'll see if we um, get it if not i didn't want to store this one i wanted to store the wheat so we'll take the next trailer that we'll, we'll so we'll end up losing this the only thing we can do is to pull it forwards we cannot put we cannot reverse this trailer it won't let us do that there's not an option for it i can raise the trailer 
and I can unhitch the, the grain trailer. So I can raise it there. So let's see what's happened. Um, grain storage, canola, 740 kilos. Right, it did put it in there. Yes. Okay, so it is actually working. We've just got to push it up beside it, and it does actually work. So there we have our first grain storage. First grain being stored. And we can lower that one back down now. Push you forward a little bit. And we now have in that grain storage 4,204 canola. Did we have that much on 4,204? How much did we have in the trailer? I thought we had less than that in the trailer. You know, I honestly, I'm, I'm genuinely not sure. Right, I do get a little bit of flickering around here on, on, these, um, on the graphics. There, there, there are flickers and stuff going on. Um, it's to do with the textures, I think. But uh, overall, it's not too bad. And if we stop there, is the trailer going to move? Quite possibly. Uh, anyway, switch off. I don't know why it goes straight to the engineer's tool when you jump off of something. And we'll press Z and then we'll lower it down and press T to start it up and then it will start uh, combining again. Right, there's one load. Let's bring that one over to there. And I think I've found a way to be able to sort of get... Well, I'm definitely sliding around a little bit as I unload there, but overall it's not too bad. So it's 28% to fill the trailer completely, which means that we... Obviously we can't put four full loads. And I bring this one round here. I went all the way up the field and then I sort of did half a width going the other way as well. And that seemed to be about right. So if I press uh, T for the cruise control button and we'll go sailing on up here. I am curious. Let's have a look from in the cab and see what it's like. Um, the way that the, the hands move. I mean, obviously, once we get a steering wheel on this game, it's going to be a little bit different. I... I don't know how much I'm going to be doing with the steering wheel. I mean, some episodes I will definitely use the steering wheel. Other, wheel, other episodes, um, if I'm mostly sort of doing other work, I won't use the steering wheel because it just tends to get in the way because I don't use that for, like, walking around or anything like that. Um, so it will depend entirely on what we're doing on any particular episode. Now, if I stop here a second, I look around. Oh, you got to actually look into the tanks. We're on 50% at the moment of canola, still on 99% fuel. So let's just back up a little bit. And we'll head in here. And in round. And I want cruise control. And off we go again. And so, yeah, the, the only issue with doing it like this is that we do have to spin round in order to be able to see what our total tank is at. But it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I think I do prefer it like this, though. Um, yes, it's difficult to sort of make it out sometimes. And if I come out like that, right off to the edge of the field there we go that's actually close enough that is close enough we got 99 percent so there's another tank full of grain that we can bring back over and we can put this one into the trailer and i'll bring that one down Just stop you right there we should i suppose we should lift the header up at least i'm gonna do that and then we can unload this one and it all runs straight through 2390 in the trailer and we're going to get the next load. So uh, I need to lower that one down. We're not far off. I would like to eventually sell some of this crop. And I'm thinking that a load of canola to the windmill might be the best place. It's going to take a fair while to get there with our little tractor, though. We might... I don't know if we can... Maybe we can tow something with the... We could. I don't think we'd be able to tow that trailer with the um, with the small pickup that we've just been given. I mean, if we could, it would be a lot faster. But I just can't see that happening. Almost exactly. Well, not quite. Ninety-seven percent. But that's that is pretty close. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, this is the third one, so we want to bring this one down into the trailer. We'll unload this lot here, and then there we go. We we'll stop there. Oop! I'd already lifted that one up, so we'll stop that one there and unload it into that trailer there the trailer is now at 84 percent so if i climb off and jump onto the tractor instead onto our jack bear we we'll run this one round and we'll tip this one again into our grain store over here and then see yeah apparently this chainsaw that we've got we can cut small shrubs and i'm not sure how we do that i, I actually i really want to find this out let me jump off a second and let's see what we got so 
Nothing's coming up with the engineer's sight. Now, it's, it says small shrub, so I go up close to it. I'm not getting anything on the engineer's sight using that one. This one here, again, is not giving me anything, and that one. So it's not a standard tool that you sort of got holding on to, but there was, in one of these buildings, there was a strimmer left in the side. Um, it's not in there. It's not over here. Oh, what do we got here? What's this? Uh, I'm not actually sure what that is. That's something to do... Is that sort of a, a small threshing thing? I've never actually seen anything like that before. Um, and I... Yeah, that's quite surprising for me. It does genuinely surprise me because I sort of know old, really old machines. Uh, be, the old hand-operated stuff and horse-drawn stuff, I know a lot of that. I've spent a lot of time looking at it and studying it and seeing the stuff, um, some of it being used and so on. And I've personally used a lot of old hand machinery and horse-drawn stuff. I've never actually used it on horses. I've used old horse-drawn stuff converted to tractors. Um, and I've never seen a machine like that in the shed. Never seen it completely new to me right I'm, I'm thinking I'm in the right place here let's try this race trailer uh, I'm looking yes we're in the right place it's going up there so we now have 7,771 kilos of canola in storage that is absolutely fantastic so let me just come back over here and I'll stop right there a minute I want to climb off a second right see that's an old blower we've got an old John Deere tractor here this is everybody's familiar with this sort of stuff um, I didn't realize that this particular model was John Deere. I'm not familiar with some of the very old ones. Um, and we've got like the wagon wheels and stuff like that up there. And we just go in here and see if there's anything that I recognize. So you got these, you got the individual cubicles for cows. And this is how it used to be done a lot uh, with the hay racks up the front. You got the manger there at the front where they would put the food. And the cows would actually have a chain that would go from there and go around their necks. It wouldn't be tight or anything like that. It would just hold them here. And this little line down through the back is called the dung passage. This is where the dung would be. So their bedding would stay nice and soft. It wouldn't get plastered in dung manure. Um, sometimes farmers have these gaps in between them so that they could access in between the cows. Although that tended to be rare in my country. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of old stuff that I can see. I've seen around in this game and it is beautifully well represented. It's very accurate. It's absolutely brilliant being able to see it all accurately represented here. Uh, we've got some big gaps in this place. Um, however, let's go back in here a minute. Like the old, we've got an old mower there, it's all tractor mounted. This here, I absolutely do not know what this is. Now, my guess is that it is a sort of threshing unit. This is my guess. I don't actually know. I can I can uh, that's the only thing that I can think of is it is some sort of threshing unit in that uh, you put the grain, you put the harvested the, the reaped corn, so it's the straw and all the grain is still on it. It goes in there and it gets processed through and that um threshes out the grain. It's either that or it's a very rudimentary sort of um baler. It compresses the straw down for later storage. I, that's all I can think of. If anybody knows what this thing is, could you please, please describe this to me and tell me what it does in the comment section. I would very much like to know what this one does. Um, you can sort of see you've got the handle. That handle there is obviously the handle that powers it. You spin that handle and then that is moved by the gears and it goes into the actual machine there. It's not something I've seen before. That is definitely a new machine to me, and I would very much love to know what it is and what it does. So if anybody can tell me that, I would be hugely appreciative. Um, right, anyway, we're getting hungry, apparently, so let's take a look. We've got food, 25 at the moment. We've got 45 there, 55. Let's go for a tin of fish. Fish in tomato sauce, and... Uh, well, we can't eat anything else. We don't have any room. Okay, so let's jump back on here. We need to go and finish our harvest. I got sidetracked there, so we need to go and finish the harvest. We'll get this one done today, and then next week we will... I'm actually thinking that I might do a an episode with... Right, let me just stop that one right there. There we go. As long as you're not in the tractor when you stop, the trailer doesn't seem to move. Um, so my thought is we will finish doing this harvest now. We will then, in our next episode, we will repair our farmhouse. 
And the episode after that, we will go and discover what the hay wagon is, what that one's all about, because I suspect that one is actually a baler, and we could do with a, a baler to deal with the straw from the wheat over there. And then the final episode of next week, we will actually harvest that wheat. Now, as I understand it, we've got the entire month of August. If we look here, it's the 4th of August at the moment. Apparently, you have the month of August, and then once it's done that, you then move on to autumn, for the next month so whether it just jumps straight to october or something like that and then you have a winter month so probably january and then you have a spring month which i would guess would be like may um so that's what i've been told is how it happens whether this is already been changed or not remember this game is early access so big changes happening on a very rapid uh basis as we sort of go through it in order to facilitate all the stuff that they want to put into this game um so at the moment this is sort of what it's uh, what it's doing. Uh, what are we on? We're on 68, 69, 70 percent at the moment. Um, so yes, we're doing absolutely wonderfully. Uh, 80 percent. I reckon if I just sort of come down straight down through there, that will be a full load, just about. 96, 97, 98, straight line all the way down through. Perfect. That worked out very nicely. So we'll lift up that header as we go. And come down here. I wonder if I can actually just dump it straight from the combine into that grain store. I possibly, I possibly could. I very possibly could. We'll tip that one out into there. Right, that's moved. And we now have 1,200 in the trailer. So we'll swing that one on round. And carry on up the hill. Um, what am I doing? I'm looking, I'm looking to the buttons here. Um, so, yes, we will get the rest of that one done next week so we should have we should have plenty of time to get that done and then get the plowing done i don't know if we should be i don't think we plant now i think that the game has us planting if we're going to be planting winter crops we will plant them in the autumn excuse me i got the hiccups um yeah if we're going to be planting winter crops um we plant them in the autumn so that would be after august is all completed and then if we want to be planting spring crops obviously you plant them in spring um I don't know if there is actually a difference between spring crops and winter crops in this game or not. I'm not sure if that one's actually been brought in yet. Uh, we will find out at some point. Right. For some reason I decided to come down this side. I'm not actually sure why I'm doing this. Still, it doesn't really matter. We've got 56%. So when we get to the bottom of the field, we will empty out again. And then we will go back up and we'll just grab the very last little bit that we've got of this canola... And it will be completely finished. We will have done the canola harvest. That is our first harvest completely finished. Our first actual farming task completely finished. I know we did a bit of plowing in episode 2 for uh, one of our neighbours. But this is our very first actual farming task that we've done for ourselves. Um, which I feel is a good thing considering this is a farming game. However, I have noticed the odd comment here and there. Um, not just on my videos but on other people's videos as well. Saying that this game can't really be called a farming game because, you know, you spend all your time repairing buildings and, and stuff like that and non-farming related tasks. I would urge anybody saying such things to go and spend a bit of time working on a farm. Um, my time working as a farmer, when you're in the harvest, that's all you're doing, is right? You're, you're just harvesting. Um, and through the winter... There's one thing that I've generally noticed through the winter is that you go and feed the animals and that takes like a couple of hours during the day. The rest of the day, throughout most of the winter, you're doing other things. You're repairing your buildings, you're repairing stone walls, you're putting up fences um, and all those kinds of things. They are actually you know, repairing greenhouses, doing stuff like that. It's all extras and... Yes, it may not seem exactly like a farming-related activity, but trust me, it is actually 100% farming-related activity. It's all farming-related. Every single little bit of it is farming-related. Everything that we're doing, doing the greenhouses, um, repairing the buildings, and doing the gardening, is, is all in there together. It's, it's all related. Right, what I wanted to do was I want, we're going to close the discharge pipe so that we can travel in around the buildings a little bit easier. And we're going to see if we can tip straight into that storage over there. So we'll bring this one in round here. And up like that. There we go. Come on round. And 
bring that one out there. I'm going to back up a little bit, and I'll stop. Oop, steady, steady. Right, is that going to be close enough? I mean, from where it was tipping previously, it, se it seems like it might be all right. I'm sort of spinning around. The camera does do some strange things when you spin it around. You, got, you do have to be... Yeah, see, and also, I don't like the way that you don't have a brake on the vehicles. It's, it's either forwards or backwards. It's not, nothing in between. Uh, so, are we going to lose... We've only got 6%. We've got 74 kilos. So this is actually a perfect way to test. Uh, start spilling grain is V. Did that go in there? It didn't give us a warning. What have we got in the silo? Is it telling us? 7, 8, 5, 1. I think it's gone in there. I think it went into that silo. Right. Close the header down. Now I'm going to spin round a minute. Just back up a little further. So, yeah, chainsaw. Apparently we have a chainsaw in the game, but I haven't seen it yet. We will just have a quick look in another couple of sheds and see if it's there or not. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. It might be one that we've got to go and buy somewhere. So, I mean, if that's what we've got to do, that's what we've got to do. Uh, lower that one down like that, and then climb off. Press E to climb off. There we go. Right. Combining done. We have harvested our canola, and that thing is ropey. That thing is very, very ropey. It's not much wonder that the yield you get using the old combines is considerably lower than the yield you get using the new combines. You do take a penalty using the old stuff. It is worth upgrading because you get more out of it. And that is, a, that is an aspect that I particularly like. That is something, there's a detail when I found that out that I thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, now, is that going to be too far away? I suspect it is. I think we're going to have to try and go around again. Um, I wonder if I can do it this way. <laughs> I'm just driving round in a circle at the moment. I tell you what, let's drive round. Let's continue the circle. We'll go on round this way, and then we'll spin round again. We'll go like that. I'm gonna bring this in round, and then we'll come up. And there we go. Now we can get it in nice and tight up to that side. I don't know where the actual tip point is. But it's got to be around here somewhere, and we stop there. So then we can go R to tip, and the trailer starts tipping up, and that is, I believe, I'm looking, I'm looking, where is it? I can't actually see it. I'm looking for the numbers, but because I'm out this side, I can't see the numbers. It's just making me feel dizzy spinning around like that. It's probably making you feel dizzy as well, so I apologize for that. It has got a very high tip on it, this trailer. It's quite impressive, actually. That is, it is quite good. It's nice that it gets it that steep because if you're handling things like firewood and stuff like that, you do actually need the trailer to be able to go up almost vertical because the wood has a tendency to stick against the posts at the bottom end of the trailer. Um, so, yeah, if you're able to do it, tip it all the way out, it, it works a lot better. Just there on the very corners of the trailer, if you've got a, t a trailer load of logs, um, they'll stick on there and then they won't come out. But if you've got the trailer able to go all the way up to almost completely vertical, then they eventually give up and they just topple all out. Um, it does make it a lot better. There's another one. There's another one of these things right here. That's the second one. It's really, really bugging me that I don't know what this thing is. So you turn it there. If you're turning that handle there, that is... What is that doing? That's not centered on there, is it? So that's sort of rotating it round. That seems a little bit odd. Is that... I don't know if it's pulling it. It's 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 producing a movement on this piece here because it's not centered on there. I don't know if that's actually a detail that's supposed to be there or not. Who knows? Um, right, I'm getting a little... I'm, I'm going to leave that go for a minute. Let's take a look at our tomatoes and see if we've got anything that we need to do on here. If I use the engineer's site, it's not telling me anything other than remove tomato seedlings. So we, got, we there's nothing else that we can do with them at the moment. And I don't know how we get the tomatoes be to be put into tins or anything like that um not a clue so let's have a look around here we got the grain storage and then we got fuel in here this fuel storage oh it doesn't actually have any oh there we go fuel storage fuel bought in large amounts is usually cheaper oh yes of course uh we did see this one we just haven't actually used it yet now is the chainsaw in here That's what i'm looking for there's some stuff here, but they, they, there's nothing actually to do in here. There's no items to use or anything like that. Um, I keep going around leaving all of the doors open. I just it doesn't really matter because of how open everything is on the walls and stuff like that. 
it'll probably be all right so yes we've done a little bit of harvesting so i think that next time we will actually go over there and we will try to do our house up because i'm getting a bit fed up we're looking at that roof we need a better roof so we will do our house we'll do the roof on the house and then once we've as soon as we've done the roof on the house we're gonna well we'll go through and we'll re replenish the house inside and out and we'll make sure that one is at least fit for habitation as soon as we've done that the next thing that we're gonna do if it will come up there we go that's the one i want just pressing the wrong button uh we want to go all the way over here and it's that one there frank now what's that why is there a an exclamation mark there you can mouse over that, but when you mouse over this one, it's not actually showing anything, so I'm not really sure. There seems to be an old... Oh, not Frank. I don't want Frank. Um, it's the hay wagon. Hay wagon by one of the barns. So there, we want to go and see Becky and see about this hay wagon, which I suspect is not a hay wagon at all. I suspect it's a baler. I'm really hoping it's a baler because if it is, it means that we've got a decent chance of being able to, do, um, to, be able to bale up our straw. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping. Let's look around here. We've got more exclamation marks. Maybe the exclamation marks something to do with people. We've got one over there. And see, there's nothing down here now. We went and did some work for that guy down there. Oh, wheat and barley is all we can sell there. We can't actually sell canola there. Uh, so that means that we need to sell wheat and barley. Not at the train station. Is this one here, agricultural market. Canola is 792 euros per ton at the moment. There's nothing else on here right now and yeah we've got another machinery store over there and that's our corn header that we've got there and then we've got the general store there the small one anyway that is all i've got time for today so if you enjoyed the episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome but until next time thank you very much for watching this is frithgar goodbye and see you later